life is all we get We may only get one chance One chance to make amends What if our time runs out? What then? Was it in our plan? Cause we only get one life So are we living? live today like it's our last no matter what comes along we still must sing our song cause tomorrow isn't guaranteed is it guaranteed oh no One life is all we get, we may only get one chance, one chance to make amends, what if our time runs out, what then, was it in our plan, cause we only get one life, so are we living, are we living for today? live today like it's our last no matter what comes along we still must sing our song cause tomorrow isn't guaranteed is it guaranteed oh no is it guaranteed Is it guaranteed? Oh no! Is it guaranteed? Oh no! We think we've got it all figured out But what if tomorrow our time runs out? So tomorrow is 726, July 26th, and in the Strong's, the word harpazzo is strong 726, and harpazzo means catching away. Tomorrow is also the 9th of Av. It's a day of mourning, a day of, of reflection. It's the, the days that the first and second temple were destroyed and all sorts of other things in the history of the Jewish people. It's an important day. A day of mourning so I was explaining this to my neighbor who came from across the street to have lunch with me today and um, she's not a watchman she's not aware of prophecy or that like thousands and thousands and thousands of people believe the end is near I've told her some things she listens to some of my songs but she's not really like in the know God hasn't told her I'm coming back I'm coming soon you know but but I explained to her that tomorrow is the day that thousands and thousands of people are watching. They're watching and they're expectantly waiting the Lord to take them tomorrow. And so she said, so we must live today like it's our last. And I, I was like, absolutely, we must. And that's my next song. And in about a minute, God gave me the whole melody for the song and like the whole idea for the song. So she is a co-writer officially on this song, Teresa. And um, I, 
I've been living with the expectancy for years now that the Lord may take me at any moment. Um, but also knowing that I'm doing a work for him. I'm an end times worker. So like I've explained, I, I don't believe I'm going to be raptured tomorrow. But I'm always aware that it may, may be my last day. Um, I personally think the day after September 23rd is more of a watch day. Um, September 23rd is the six year anniversary of the Revelation 12 sign. So six years will have passed and it will be the start of the seventh. And the day after the Revelation 12 sign, which was September 23rd, 2017, the day after is the Day of Atonement. I think that's a more interesting set of dates, but I don't do date setting. I don't. And frankly, I'm happy to do whatever God has me do. If he wants me to stay here another 30 years, then like, that's what I will do. If he wants me to do exactly what I'm doing every day for the next 30 years, I mean, I can't imagine how I would write 15,000 songs, but I suppose it's possible. <laughs> I don't think that's what he's going to have me do long, long run, long term. But, you know, it's what I've been doing since 2017. And um, I'll do whatever God tells me to do. Whatever he tells me to do, wherever he tells me to go, whatever I will do. Um, but like, my heart is to tell you about him, to have you equipped, to know what's going on, that it is the end, that if you're not a believer, like I spend so much time, like, I mean, almost like being mean about it. Like you got to get right with Christ. You got to get right with Christ because time is running out. Like it's exhortation. It may sound a little harsh, but its purpose is to get you right. And the reality is God is so good and he is love and he fills you with his love when you were born again. When you have a testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And our testimony is a song. So in this song, I say, no matter what comes along, we still must sing our song. My song is a testimony of God's love. His love. His love is what causes us to repent. His love is, we love him because he first loved us. When we realize who he is, and how much he loved us and what he did to save us. And we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe with everything we are and we're literally born again. We are born again by his spirit and his spirit is his love. And you're like wrapped up in his love. Now, I don't always walk around in the love bubble, but he's wrapped me up in it so much that I'm aware of nothing but his goodness. I see his goodness in everything, even tragedies. I see his goodness because I know he works all things together for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. Even in the worst of the worst things, God is working it all out for good. And we're in a fallen world. That is not God's fault. We're the ones who sin on a daily basis. And yet he still loves us. And yet he still loves us and knows us by name. The God of the universe knows you by name. He knows every single hair on your head. But if it's your time tomorrow, if your time's up, your time's up. God knows whether or not you're going to say yes to him. He already knows. You may not know. But he already knows. He wrote the book. The book has already been completed. Now we're just living out. We're, we're playing out our roles. 
And what we're going to choose to do is our choice, yes, but God already knows what our answer is going to be. So what's your answer going to be? If tonight's your last night, are you going to choose Christ or are you not? We are literally at the end. He told me to write a musical called The Revelation of Jesus Christ. He told me to teach doctrine through song because his people do not know the word of God. So sometimes I sing hard songs that are hard pieces of scripture. Sometimes I sing lovely songs that are about God's love. Sometimes I'm just telling you about Jesus. Sometimes I'm telling you of the bride of Christ. And like, like the Revelation 12, that's like all over my life. And the 144,000, like God told me, Tara, you are a witness of these things. So show them what I show you. I am nobody special, but I have all sorts of things to point to and tell you about. And I want to see you with me for eternity. I want you to understand God's love and his mercy because his love and his mercy win the day. So that's just all I got to say. We only get one life. One life is all we get. We may only get one chance, one chance to make amends. What if our time runs out? What then? Was it in our plan? I mean, you may have plans for your life, but what if it's your, your last day? Did you plan for that? Did you plan for eternity? Have you dealt with the issue of your soul? You have the house. You have the Botox. You've got the clothes, you've got the kids, you've got the education, you've got the career, you have the church attendance, you've got, I mean, even like things like that, you've got like, you've got it all wrapped up in pretty little boxes. But what is the condition of your soul? You've got, you've got whatever time you've got to get it right with God in terms of your soul. For some people, that's 20 years. For, for some children, it's less. And God just takes them. Some people get a hundred years. But you may only have till tonight to get right with God in terms of your soul. Because this body suit, it's just a suit. It is a facade. It is not who you are. It comes off. It comes off. And who you are here is who is going to stand before God at the white throne judgment. And Jesus is going to say yes or no to your soul. Does your soul get to spend eternity with God in heaven? Only if you've been born again by Jesus Christ and the life-giving spirit, the spirit of God has literally indwelt your soul. Your spirit, I don't, I don't fully know the mechanics, but... You're, what's going on in here? If not, I mean, darkness, eternal darkness, separation from God, eternal separation from God, fire and brimstone. And it's only because you didn't want God. It's not going to be God's fault. It's going to be you chose not to have the love of God in your heart. You chose, you chose your sin. You wanted your sin more than you wanted God. So it's not anybody's fault but your own if you don't get to spend eternity with God. Don't think just because you die, you get to go to heaven. That's the big lie. It's only for those who want God. And those of us who want God, we sing our song about it. We sing our song. It's our testimony of his love. And like, it's not something you can fake. You either can talk about God's love as something you have personally in your life, 
or you talk about it as a thing that, you know, you know about, but you don't own it. So you got to own it. You got to, you got to literally own it. In the day you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. He loves you too much to let you be eternally separated from here. That's why God sent Jesus to save us because we have a sin problem and he's the only one who can save us from our sin problem. He literally washes us clean by the blood that he shed. It doesn't make any sense, but it is the way God decided to do it. God decided from before this world began, before any of us were here, because he already knows the end of the book. He decided that Jesus would be the savior of humankind. He would die upon a cross. He would shed his blood. He would be raised again. He would be going back up to the Father. He would send his Holy Spirit to those who believe in him. He would set us free from Captivity. We're in captivity here on this earth. We're under a curse. That is what the scripture says. You need to know what the word of God says and you need to hear it with spiritual ears. We are literally in captivity and Jesus had to come and set us free. Do you see? God bless you.